everyone. I am Dr. Adeinka Badebo, a first class graduate of zoology from the University of Ibadan, Nigeria. I am your biology lecturer. From time to time, I'll be giving you um, videos, lectures on uh, topics and subtopics in biology, ecology, zoology, toxicology, and genetics from time to time. Please, please make sure you watch this video, like the video, share the, share the video, and subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. And also, don't forget to hit the notification button. Hit the notification button is just down there. Hit the notification button. Okay, so in this video, um, the subtopic we are treating is in continuation of my previous video. We are still on the general concept of ecosystem. Ecosystem, you know, in an ecosystem, um, one major important um, factor, or one major important um, factor, yes, that makes ecosystem to work is energy transfer. So in this video, we'll be looking at energy transfer, energy transfer. So actually, the way through which energy, trans energy is transferred in an ecosystem is through the food chain. It's through food chain, and then in the food chain, we have what we call trophic levels. Trophic levels. In the food chain, we have what we call trophic levels. Trophic levels are basically feeding levels. Feeding levels, in summary, I'll give the details, and then, also, in an ecosystem, we have what we call the food web. Okay, trophic levels, we could have the first trophic level in a, in a food chain. It's called the producer trophic level. The second trophic level is the primary consumer trophic level. The next trophic level is the secondary consumer trophic level. And then the next trophic level is the tertiary consumer trophic level. And then we could have the quaternary quaternary consumer trophic level and so on and so forth so i want to give you the details of this and then after the trophic level we then talk about the food web um we are talking about energy transfer i've just given you the summary of the concept of energy transfer in an ecosystem so just to give you some more detail of energy transfer you know um, like I've discussed earlier in one of the previous lectures, energy transfer basically starts with the autotrophs. I've also discussed earlier that the ultimate source of energy in, on the Earth's surface and in an ecosystem is the sun. So the autotrophs are organisms that can actually make use of the energy from the sun, the sun, they can convert some energy into um, organic molecules, into organic molecules, and uh, these organic molecules um, are usually um, made available as energy source. They are usually made av available as energy source for subsequent um, organisms that feed on them, that feed on the autotrophs, and the organisms that feed on the autotrophs they are called heterotrophs. Organisms that feed on the autotrophs, they are called heterotrophs. And heterotrophs are most times animals. Heterotrophs are most times animals that feed on, that feed on plants, that feed on photosynthetic organisms. So, in an ecosystem, autotrophs that feed, some autotrophs, some autotrophs feed directly on Excuse me. In an ecosystem, some autotrophs feed directly on um, um, some autotrophs, some heterotrophs. What I meant to say is that in an ecosystem, some heterotrophs feed directly on autotrophs. Why some heterotrophs feed on other heterotrophs? That is, animals feed on other animals. And this continue like that. One animal feeds on the other animal, and then another animal feeds on the same, on that animal. And this continue like that, leading to the transfer of energy. In this, for, this leads to the transfer of energy from one organism to the other in a series, in a series. 
and this series or such sequential series through which energy is transferred from one organism to the next is actually what is referred to as food chain. I will repeat that. Sequential transfer of energy from one organism to the next is what we refer to as in an ecosystem, is what we refer to as a food chain. Sequential transfer of energy from one organism to the next is what we refer to as food chain. Food chain are usually linear. They are, they are linear, they, they are linear um, pattern or uh, yes, linear pattern or the linear pattern through which energy is transferred from one organism to the next. That makes food chain. They can be called food chain. They can also be called grazing link. Grazing links. So it can be called food chain, but it can also be called grazing links. Now, each um, stages in a food chain is called a trophic level. Each stages in a food chain is called a trophic level. You know, like I said, it usually starts with an autotroph. So the autotroph there will represent a trophic level. And then heterotrophs that feed on autotrophs, they will represent another trophic level. And then animals that feed on these other animals represent another trophic level. So to repeat that, each stages in a food chain represent trophic level. They are trophic level. So, um, what is the meaning of trophic level? The simple meaning of trophic level, actually trophic level is from the Greek word, trophos. Trophos. T-R-O-P-H-O-S. Trophos. The meaning of trophos is food. So it's, it's simply, it simply means feeding levels. Trophic level simply means feeding levels. The levels to which the levels at which different organisms feed. So that is the meaning of trophic level. Now, having said that, we could see that there are different trophic levels in a food chain. We could identify different trophic levels in a food chain, which I have listed here. We'll have the first trophic level in any food chain. The first trophic level in any food chain are usually producers. And producers, they are heterotrophs. Sorry, pardon me. Producers are autotrophs. Autotrophs are organisms that have um, the ability, they have the ability to convert the solar energy into useful organic molecules. And they usually have a pigment called the chlor they usually have a pigment called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll located in a chloroplast in their in their organ. So producers usually form the first trophic level. And they are usually autotrophs. They are usually what? Autotrophs. Producers form the first trophic level, and they are usually autotrophs. They are usually what? Autotrophic organisms. Autotrophic organisms. Also, like I've said, we could have primary consumers. Primary consumers are those that feed on the, the producers. From there, we could also have secondary consumers. The, the, the next trophic level. The, the first trophic level, once again, is the producers. The second trophic level is the primary consumers. The third trophic level is the secondary consumers. The fourth trophic level is the tertiary consumers. And usually in, on, in a food chain, in a typical food chain, there are rarely times, there are rare cases where you have up to five to six trophic levels. You know, there are rare cases where you have up to five to six trophic levels or more trophic levels. There are rare cases where you have uh, more than six trophic levels in a food chain. It is rare to have more than six, um, four, five, six. You no, know, it is rare to have more than these figures in a food, in a food chain. And there are reasons in, in ecology you know, there are, science, there are reasons, scientific reasons why the numbers of trophic level in a food chain is limited. It's limited to four, five, max six in a, in a food chain. The, one of the reasons why there is limited trophic level in a food chain is because 
at every feeding stage some energy is wasted from the food chain by animals that is feeding on each other note what i just said as one of the reasons that limits the number of trophic level that can exist in a food chain is because at every feeding stage where animals are feeding on another animal some energy are usually lost some energy are usually lost from one animal feeding another animal so it is not the energy that is it is not the total energy that starts the food chain that gets transferred that get transferred to the to the um say the, 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 the tertiary consumer energies are usually lost that is one it, it's and this normally limits the number of trophic level that is found on a food chain other reasons other factors that leads to limited number of trophic level in a food chain could be the availability of sufficient food of preferred type availability of sufficient food of preferred type you know um, animals usually um, eventually um, preferred some types of food and once an animal prefers some prefer some type of food and it is available in that community or in that environment you realize, realize that in an ecosystem those animals we only tend to feed on those type of food because they are available and then that will cut short the numbers of trophic level in that local food chain in that local food chain i'll repeat that statement the availability of preferred type of food in an in an environment usually limits the um the trophic levels in a food chain just to bring that home to you for instance if on a grassland the 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 predator the 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 predator that is there if on the grassland we have um rodents some rats some rats as the primary consumers and then the secondary consumers happen to be say some wild cats wild cats if it is only wild if it is only rats that is available and also in, more in abundance in that local grassland the preferred food of the wild cat will usually always be the rats that is available so that has limited the number of tropic level one could form in that grassland to so grasses wild rats um, rats and then wild cats so that is just as an illustration so another reason why there could be limited trophic levels in the food chain is what we call territorial space territorial space you know animals usually form what we call territoriality is a, a condition in which animals carve out certain space for themselves where a male becomes the dominant animal where a male becomes the dominant animal in that space and usually the, the, the male will the, the, the male that cover that territory will not usually go out of that territory and by reason of not going out of that territory that will also limit the available food that is available to it that it can explore it will only concentrate on the food that is within the territory it has carved for itself so territorial space which is one one common behavior in animal also limits the number of trophic levels we can find in food chains in food chain so food chain in which most primary production is decomposed or consumed by as detritus as detritus is refers to as detrital food chain i'll repeat that you know there are some food chain in which once the primary production is produced they usually end up as dead matters the primary production from plants once they are produced they end up as dead particles that these dead particles they are called detritus detritus now 
any food chain in which most primary production end up as detritus and then this detritus becomes the first source of the first source of um, the first trophic level the first trophic level in a food chain that trophic that food chain is usually refers to as detrital food chain detrital food chain detrital food chain detrital food chain is a food chain in which most primary production end up as detritus and usually these detritus form the primary the, the first trophic level usually from the first trophic level in that food chain and an example where this is common where you have the trital food chain you find this in tropical moist forest in tropical moist forest where most of the big trees end up falling down their leaves and backs and logs end up falling down and becoming detritus and then these detritus um, eventually they are the primary source of they are the first source of food for the, the primary consumers some primary consumers and then so we have what we call the detritus food chain as the main as the first trophic level in such trophic level in such food chain so having said that um having said that about producers I would say that we then we then I want to want to look at producers. Definitely by now we know that producers they are photosynthetic plants, and also they can be both photosynthetic green plants. They can also be algae. They can also be what algae, algae. Also some bacteria such as blue green blue green bacteria also usually form producers. Blue green bacteria, you know, what I've mentioned now is that green plants, algae, and some bacteria, they usually form the producers. They usually form the producers. You know, in an aquatic, in a typical, in an aquatic ecosystem, microscopic algae, microscopic algae and blue green bacteria usually form the primary, usually form the producers in an aquatic ecosystem. Microscopic algae, blue green bacteria form the primary, usually form the producers, and they are usually referred to as phytoplanktons. Phytoplanktons. Phytoplanktons in an aquatic ecosystem. However, in a terrestrial ecosystem, you know, in a terrestrial ecosystem, higher plants, larger plants are usually what dominates. You know, they are usually what dominates. An example of this are grasses, steps. Agricultural plants, you know, conifers. These are usually the primary. These are usually these are usually the producers. The producers in terrestrial ecosystem. I will mention that this will take me to primary consumers. The primary consumers are those that feed directly on producers. Animals that feed directly on the autotroph or the producers, they are called the primary consumers. And usually, the primary consumers they are called um herbivores they are called what herbivores because they feed on plant matters primary consumers are called herbivores they feed on plant matters however some primary consumers do not eat the plant directly some primary consumers don't eat the plant directly they will rather parasitize and live on the plant some primary consumers don't feed on the plant they rather parasitize and live on the plant Example of this is a common insect called aphid. Aphid is a parasite of some plants and it normally lives on the plant as a parasite and it feeds on, you know, it, it, it feeds on sap, sap from the plants. And so it is also a form of primary consumer. There are other primary consumers are fungi, fungi that lives on other plants are also primary consumers you know i could another um another example of primary consumer that live like a, as a parasite a very good example is a is a plant called is a plant a plant now the plant is called broomrape plant 
broom rape. The scientific name for the scientific name for that is Orobanche. Orobanche plant. It is a plant, but this plant usually it feeds on other plants. Like I was saying, Orobanche is a very good example of plant and higher plant that parasitize other plants. There's this other, other common one, mistuto. Mistuto is also an higher plant that parasitize that parasitize other plants. In the case of mistuto, mistuto is a green plant. It can produce by itself. However, it's it's um it's um it's sap it it depends on other plants for its 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 um source of water. Like it's um, it grows on other plants to sap their nutrients, whereas it can also photosynthesize by itself. Now, that is for um, parasitic primary consumers. There are also primary consumers on land. On land, um, usually pr primary consumers on land include insects, reptiles, birds, and mammals. These are primary consumers on land. In aquatic environments, there are also primary consumers. In aquatic environments, primary consumers can include crustaceans, um, um, crustaceans such as water fleas, crab lovers, crab lovers, barnacles, and also it can also include mollusk, mol mollusk, mollusks such as bivalves, mussel, clams. These are primary